ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Well, hello there, and welcome back to yet another FileMaker tutorial video where we are learning more about FileMaker Pro. My name is Matt Petrowski, bringing you these FileMaker tutorials over at my website, FileMakerMagazine.com. If you're watching this video on YouTube, then I encourage you, if you find anything within this video that helps you out, and please give me a thumbs up or you can even subscribe if you'd like to and you will get notifications about the new videos that are released, the free videos. And if you're interested in more content similar to this, you can always check out my website, FileMakerMagazine.com. So what are we talking about today? Today we have the topic of some top five tips that are time savers that I like to use in FileMaker Pro. So let's take a look at them and go through them one by one. All right, so the first tip that I have for you that's the biggest time saver that I use constantly is option drag. And that's on the Macintosh. If you're on Windows, it's going to be control drag. So as I head into layout mode here on the database, this is an option that I'd like to have a copy of. So hold, of course, holding down the option key, selecting and dragging allows me to actually copy that. If I hold down the shift key, then you can see that it pops to a constraint of either a zero or a 90 degrees. It doesn't do 45, but it's really nice to have that option so that you can actually copy something. Now, if you're going to use this trick, then of course you wanna make sure that any of the settings that are specific to the object that you're copying, that you make sure and take those off. What are they? Well, we can see right here that we have the hide calculation currently turned onto this object. So I'd need to uh, change or turn that off. We can also see that the tool tip, which we have right here, is something that you would need to account for. Any object names would need to be taken off. Any settings such as conditional formatting or script triggers, if those are turned on the object, you gotta make sure and take those off. Ultimately, it's up to you as to whether or not you want to option drag a certain item. Now, what I tend to do is if I have a standard field, I will actually have that field in the non-visible portion here off to the side of the layout, have a copy of whatever my standard objects are without any of the special extras on them. That's all of the tool tips, the conditional formatting, the placeholder text, anything that is associated to an object. But option drag works in the relationship graph as well for any of your table occurrences. And you can see right there, I was able to get rid of those. The option key also is really handy. And on again, on Windows, it's the control key. If you want to get rid of things without actually having to uh, see the prompt, for example, I hit the delete key now, and I get this prompt from FileMaker Pro. Am I sure I want to delete this graph or this table occurrence? Sure. Well, if I don't want to see that and I hold down the option key, it just goes away. And that applies in many different areas of FileMaker, within scripts, within fields, within tables, you name it, option key is basically your universal override key. All right, for tip number two, I'm calling this one bulk actions. And boy, does it apply in all of the different areas around FileMaker. Whenever you're going to apply some type of change or do something to a lot of things, or I should say to one thing, make sure that you might be able to do it to a lot of things in order to help speed things up. For example, here in layout mode, I can select all of a given object by simply selecting that one object, going up to the edit menu, and then where it normally says select all, again, just like our tip number one, if I hold down the modifier key of the option key, or it may be control again on Windows, I can do select same. So what I've done is I've on screen selected all on of the buttons on this particular layout. So my initial selection was a button and then it selected all other buttons. In this case, it's a button bar with each of the segments selected and same here as well. If I select this text right here and if I use the command keyboard shortcut of command shift A or command option A, what I'm going to select is all of a given type. Let's select off here and let's select all of the text and do a command option A and there it selects all of them for me. Again, if I select the field, command option A, it will select all of my fields, even fields that are on other tabs. And from there, I can make any type of changes that I want. Now we can see that FileMaker 
will give us a dashed line when any of the settings in the inspector actually don't have, they have mixed values, meaning they vary across all of the different objects. Of course, if I wanted to select and change everything to a nine point size, I could do that and that would actually be applied. And yet another area of bulk actions is when you want to check and uncheck things or have things happen when you have multiple things selected. For example, if I select here on this first layout and then hold down the shift key to select a consecutive uh, selection of layouts, I can now affect all of those at one time. If I ch click the checkbox, it will check or uncheck all of the items that are selected. Same thing applies within the scripts. If I open up the scripts and if I select multiples of those, I can check and uncheck those. I can also do things such as bulk deletes and all kinds of different things. Here with all of the layout selected, if I click open, it will actually open all of those windows all at one time, which makes it very nice for being able to get those all on screen. Of course, with the window options, you can choose all of these different options of tile horizontally, vertically, cascade, and then bringing them to front. Very quick for doing bulk actions. And for tip number three, what I'm going to suggest is that you take advantage of the right click menus, especially within layout mode. FileMaker has been enhancing this over the years, and what you get with the right click menu is a lot of the things that you would normally have to take uh, go all the way up to the main menu. So with this field selected here, I could take the time and go up to the format menu and choose text color, alignment, uh, conditional formatting, script triggers, but it's much easier with the object selected to simply just right click. And here what we're going to find is we are going to find some latest enhancements such as object style, where I can actually choose and change out of all of the defined styles within the theme. This is in FileMaker 6. We can actually specify or change the field itself make it a button if we wanted to, set our conditional formatting, do our script triggers, and of course be able to access all of our different colors as well. And we have our arrange down at the bottom where we have our group, our ungroup, lock and unlock, and also all of our bring to fronts and send to backs. And it makes it really nice in order to be able to do all of this with all of your objects. For example, if I have multiple selected and I wanted both of these to be aligned, I could hold down the shift key and of course I can take the time to go over to the inspector here and then choose my alignment to choose the left. But if I didn't want to do that, just a simple right click gives me the arrange menu and then the align and then the left edges. Of course, if you take the time and set up some shortcut keys within the Macintosh, you can do that for an application. You can just use keyboard shortcuts as well. But we can see that it's very easy here with a right click I'm aligning those to their left edges. So don't forget about that right click. It can save a lot of time. And for tip number four, we're following right in line with tip number three, and that is the right click menu. But in this case, it deals with the data itself. Here in this developer view of my data of this custom function database, I have 2,091 records. Now, if I wanted to see all of the records that have the source of BD, with a quick little right click, I'm going to be able to choose this option of matching records. Now, don't just stop there with matching records. Remember that you also have constrain found set and extend found set. So initially, I'm going to have a matching record set of all of my records that are BD. We can see that the found set has gone from 2,291 to 1,844. If I wanted to filter this even further, I can now constrain the found set. Let's say, for example, I want to find all of the items that are actually with, include a parameter of text. When I right click to choose that one, I'm going to choose the option to constrain the found set. That means that it's going to keep the found set of the BD records, but now it's going to limit those to just those that include the word text. Now it gets even better than this. If I scroll over here with my content and I get to the point where I have this creation and modification uh, timestamps, if for example, I wanted to find all of these records or constrain these 279 that I filtered down that are now BD and constrained to those that include a parameter called text, 
You can also do this type of filtering with simply a selection. So rather than selecting and just simply right clicking in the field in general and choosing from that menu, you can also select into a field and it'll highlight only that part of the data that you actually want to filter. So in this case, if for example, I wanted to highlight everything that actually happened at one o'clock. Now in this case, it may not work because it might need to be 1300. But if I zoom out here, right click and then constrain the found set even further, yeah, we can see that FileMaker did not find anything. So if I modify my find, we can see what FileMaker actually did. First off, it should have my, well, I'm working on a found set, that's what it is, but here's what it did to the actual find. You can see that everything that I had selected was the date and just the number one. But in this case, what's happening is FileMaker is actually interpreting this one as one o'clock in the morning, not necessarily the time that the records were actually created, which was actually at 1300 hours. But you can see that what FileMaker did for me is it put in the asterisks, asterisks, which means it will take any minutes and any seconds. And it did that for me just because I had highlighted what I wanted to have actually happen. And so now when I execute my find here after I zoom out, I should get a result that will narrow things down. Well, in that case, it wasn't a constrained found set. It just found everything that was in that uh, one o'clock range. But here it again, it's really easy. Right click, find matching records, select text, constrain found set, scroll over, let's just select the date only and let's constrain the found set to that. And super quickly, just like that, we found the 277 records that match BD, have the parameter of text and also happen to be on the date of 2-12-2017, regardless of the time. And for my fifth and final tip in this video, it's going to be about referencing schema and your structure. No matter how good of a FileMaker developer you are, you're constantly needing to look at the graph and reference your current context, which is the layout and the table occurrence that you're currently on and what's connected to it and what you, how you want to get to the data. Now there's multiple ways to do this here in layout mode. We can always see that when we're setting some type of field or data, we can select the field, we can double click, and I need to reference the graph. The easiest way to do that is there's a button in the bottom of the picker where you can just go right to manage database and you can reference your relationship graph. A quick little hit of the escape key will trigger the cancel and get you right back to where you need to be. Now on any of the selection menus, you can of course try to hunt and peck and find out is it this one or is it this one, which one is it? Well, I like to simply just start to type MAN for manage, it'll jump to the bottom of the manage database list. No matter how long your list is, unless you've got a lot of MAN related named items, but if you jump all the way down to the manage database and hit that, you're gonna be right back in the graph. You're either looking at tables or fields, but you can switch to the relationships. And of course that escape key will get you out really quickly. Working within your defined database, you're on a field and you're modifying that. We're taking a look at say this auto enter calculation and I don't have access to my relationship graph. I can't click, I'm having a problem. No problem. Anywhere where manage relationships is shown, you can select it and it will bring that up for you so that you can reference the graph. And again, a quick a little escape key. Well, in this case, you need the return key in order to close, but you can do your reference and then make your selections and move forward with the calculation or the code that you're working on. As with all of my videos, I'd like to wish you much luck with your own FileMaker development. If you're watching this on YouTube, then I encourage you again to subscribe or at least give me a thumbs up if some of this information helped you out. If you'd like to check out more of my content, please consider heading over to FileMakerMagazine.com. And as always, happy FileMaking. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.FileMakerMagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.